live on air. I said, what news? He said, the CRTC just had a, they just formally sanctioned you and your radio show. And I was really tired. This is my wife's favorite story, because she's listening to the show all the time to make sure that, <laughs> she wants to make sure that whatever's going to get me in jail, she'll understand. <laughs> so, I, this guy, Julian Hecht, I said, they did what, Julian? He said, they just formally sanctioned you. I said, at 35,000 feet, what part of they can kiss my ass, don't they understand? <laughs> a couple of months later, they couldn't get me off the air. It was announced that the radio station was going to be converted into a, the signal, the frequency, into a, into a free channel station, which means their power is virtually unlimited. We're going to, from a small AM station to this, to this massive signal, 100,000 watts, 50,000 watts, they can like reach the moon. Because CBC had retired two of those frequencies. Nobody can get them. You can't get these, these frequencies. To get me off the air and my French counterpart on CKVL, this guy Andre Artur, they gave the owners of this station these two frequencies without a word of complaint from the competition. As long as there's no more talk, it would have to be all news. Well, that station has closed down since, both stations. And freedom of expression is very important, and we can, we can win. We can win by doing what we're doing now. We don't stop. You know, when we had that first South Stormont sign this bylaw saying, we'll never tell anyone what language they can put on a sign, and they made it part of their law, well, all of a sudden, all the French media, some of the English media, and all the, the, the French activists, like this lawyer, Ron Caza, uh, oh, it means nothing. It's fait rien. All he's doing is he's reaffirming what already exists in the Constitution. It's a joke. If it was such a joke, why did they talk about it for weeks on end afterwards? Why did they make it such a huge issue? It's because we fought back. And we won. We brought the same resolution to South Glengarry where I live and it was a fiasco not on our behalf but on theirs they were so frightened of the 30 percent of the population or they say is French they were so frightened to promote this and present it they didn't even have the resolution in the minutes of that meeting after we sent out 5,000 flyers it cost us a fortune and it's like now they're going to revisit because a lot of people in the area are really upset. So in January, my understanding is, they're going to pass this resolution. That won't mean anything either, I guess. The mayor of, the mayor of Kentville, which is North Granville, also in the next month or so, I think sooner than Oslo, is also amending their sign law to put in the same thing that they will guarantee that no one will ever tell anyone what language they're allowed to post a sign in. It's going to spread. It's going to spread and people are going to catch on. Between reality TV, between all the other stuff that, that, that people pay attention to, opposed to their rights and the rights of their neighbors, they're going to start to understand, they're going to start to listen, they're going to start to learn. We, we have media now that's waking up. And it's us. If we keep fighting, we keep standing up for our principles, we're going to win. You know, I, I, I read the other day that Pierre, uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau's son, just never had a job in his life. Anyone in this room who's a teacher, I apologize that I don't mean any malice by it. But you've never, teachers have never left school. They never had to meet a payroll, never had to hire people, never had to fire people. Uh, they never had to weigh up, weigh a lake at night, weigh, lay awake at night like Anna and I have over the years, trying to figure out how we're going to pay everybody, including our suppliers. We used to go to the bank at like 5 to midnight so we can take money off our credit cards, so we can pay our staff. We went to 5 to midnight because you're going to take so much on the day. So at five after midnight, we put the credit cards back in. 
We never missed a payroll, ever. Our story is not unique. I mean, every, anyone who's ever started up a business, you know. So now we're going to have a guy, and they say, oh, it's going to be a cakewalk. He'll probably win the liberal nomination. Some people are saying, oh, he's going to just steamroller, steamroll right across Canada. I don't think so. I think the, I think the Western Canadians have not forgotten. I hope so. so. But, you know, in some ways, in some ways, the best way to fix something is let it get entirely broken. Maybe it's good if a Trudeau came in and let him just finish the job so that all those people who are sitting with their hands out expecting government to give them, expecting to take from the, from the takers or from the makers. Maybe when the money runs out, and it's running out quickly, by the way, Canada's, Canada's fiscal health is really not what the government is pretending it is. We're in trouble. We're going to win. <coughs> we're going to win because we're dancing on the side of the angels. We're not telling anybody what they can't do. We're just telling people, don't tell me what we can do. The people in this room, there's probably no one in this room who I wouldn't look to to depend upon for anything, no matter what the age is or gender. People in this room aren't, aren't takers. <coughs> Just by the fear, the, 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 the virtue that you're here, it's because you care. You, know, you care about your country, you care about your province, you care about your city, you care about your neighbors, your friends. Like I, I don't, I, I recognize all of you, but I don't know any of you really close, up tight and personal, or up close and personal. But we all share a common bond. The left does not share that bond. When we go and fight these guys whether it's provincially, federally, municipally, we're fighting out of our own pockets. Everyone here paid money today to be here. I, mean, I don't think this lunch was free for anybody. You came here, you made, you made the effort, and you put your money down so you can be part of this. The left doesn't do that. The left goes to the government and says, give me the other people's tax money so that we can do what we want to do. That money is running out. And as the money gets scarcer and scarcer, there won't be the funds to go and finance those groups, the Franco groups, or the Me First groups, or the academic groups, or all the other groups that live off of our income taxes. It won't be there. The tap's going to go off, and we'll still be here. And I thank all of you for that. And thanks for listening.